Okay, so are they aware? No. Then let me create awareness and educate them. So how well do you understand their problem to educate them? All right? Then if they are aware, how urgent is it? Is the urgency high or low? Because if I'm aware I have a problem, but the urgency is very low, yeah, then maybe I need to schedule. I say, can we talk about this probably two months from now? I will not waste my time with you. But I will appreciate your time and follow up with you six months from then. Maybe then you felt a pinch in your life and you can talk. So it's not about forcing. Now, this is more of sales, yeah? But you're using the, the, the techniques to engage and get ideas from, from these potential customers, all right? Then if they tick out and the awareness is high, the urgency is also high, ah, proceed to validate, okay? Nope. Sorry, I responded here. Yeah. So, if the guys, if it is low awareness, low urgency, what do you do? You create awareness. And then, if you create awareness, the idea is to see whether the, ur the urgency goes up. But if you create awareness and the awareness is so high, but the urgency is so low, maybe you need to keep building your idea. It's probably for the future. You get my point? And you can ha hold on to it and know. I have a system after an idea is in, a, in my pipeline for some time, sometimes I might say, okay, let me drop this idea and pursue this other, okay? And I'm not saying it's, it's a failure, but it's a game of chances. Now, if it is high urgency, no, high awareness, high urgency, immediately you don't want to sell to that person. You want to proceed and validate, okay? So how do I validate? Okay, so now I've confirmed that this guy is in traffic jam, yeah? This particular guy is aware that he gets hungry while he's going home in this traffic jam. And when I talk to him about chicken, he says, yeah, I want to solve my hunger problem. It's very urgent when I'm in that traffic. At that point, you don't rush and sell or give them a product or set up a business. You go in and say, okay, now let me check the frequency of this pain and the severity of the pain. Frequency, how often it happens. This customer uh, that I talked to, are they on this road every single day? That's frequency. If the guy was just in Kampala, and we see this a lot, and then you sell to him a nice phone, and he says, this is good, but he's going to Arua, and it's because people from Arua love those phones, and you set up a business here, you will set up, wait, and no one will come. All right? So it's, again, you need to play around with that. So frequency... Wow, the guy is here all the time. Severity, when I'm hungry, can I really leave my traffic jam? Come out and pack, wait for you to give me this chicken. No, I'd rather continue. If I have chewing gum, I'll first chew my chewing gum as I go home, yeah? So it means it's not that severe a pain, okay? So if the frequency is high, but the severity is, not, is low, then the pricing and uh, strategies come in. You have high frequency, low severity. Well, I could say now let me target more, but price very attractive so that people are attracted to come. And then there you need to, to define your minimum viable audience. How many people should you have on board eh, before you can say, this is the business I'll start. Otherwise, you will not break even. All right? Now, if the frequency is low, but the severity is high. For example, how many times do you get a toothache in a year? Maybe no. Okay. In two years, maybe once every three years you get a toothache, yeah? Frequency is low. But when you get it, yeah? If it is at two, <laughs> you would want even to run to the dentist, right? So the severity is high. The frequency is low. You go for premium pricing. Every time he comes, the price is there. Okay? So you get how you're playing around with that. Eh? And, and here you'll be answering these questions. Is this high, low, low? You just put, and then later you'll analyze your data, and you can get any of the facilitators to also help you analyze that data and get some insights out of the data. All right? 
And then if the frequency is high and the severity is also high, I'll give you an example of something like that that I would think of. Um, we all came here using uh, trans means of transportation. Definitely we used a car, a vehicle, something which needed fuel. How often do vehicles turn into a petrol station? Very, very many times, yeah? Um, what is the severity of the pain in terms of the vehicle running out of fuel, yeah? Along a road. That is a huge pain, yeah? The frequency is high, the pain is really high. So you say, okay, I'll set up a petrol station. Yes, go ahead, but the strategy would be have other strategies eh? because then you might have competition. Many people go into that space a lot. All right? Now, the last part of the validation process, not the last, uh, but the one I want to share with you, because you can go as far as you can, but don't get involved in too much analysis eh? and you fail to act. Okay, so, but the one I want to end with today is, all right, we know that the guy is aware, the urgency is high, we know the frequency and the severity. Now, I want to go back and talk about quality and price. So you ask, you're not asking the guy, is my product of good quality? Yeah, no, you're probably taking the product because you built it and saying, hey, um, this is my product, Ronzori, yeah? This used to be a product of Coca-Cola. They paid me a lot of salaries for this, so I'm super proud. So this is my product. And then the customer tells you, wow, this is, this is actually good quality. You are observing and picking information, yeah? So if you get feedback that the product is of good quality, you say, okay, so the quality is high. Then you tell them, but the bottle is gonna be 5,000 and the guy almost falls off his feet. So it means your quality is too high. All right? Now, if your quality, sorry, price, if your quality is high, you can play around with the premium price as well, isn't it? But you need to find a way of explaining why that is so. So you need to go back to tell them how it solves whatever nice problem they have, all right? Now, what if I tell you this? Now, I'll give you an example. I don't know what, th I know what this is, but uh, how much do you think you can buy this in a supermarket? What would you be willing to pay? Huh? 3K? I hear 1,000. I hear 3K. 2,000. Okay, so if you came in and I told you, no, this is uh, 15,000. Uh, you see what I'm talking about? Your perception of its, of its, well, quality can also come down to, to a lot of things, yeah? The size and all that kind of stuff, yeah? Your perception of the size of this uh, to the price doesn't have a, a very great relationship, yeah? So, again, you're picking feedback. What does the customer or potential customer perceive of my product in terms of quality and how am I pricing? Because again, you want to drive an SUV, but you're pricing to know that after 10 customers, I have my SUV, which is a bit selfish, yeah? Okay, so when you've done that, so you can have high quality, no, let me start from here, low quality, high price. Ding, that business will not, you will sell probably to your relatives who can't run away from you. And I know some of you have sold some products to your relatives who can't run away from you. You understand? Low quality, high price, you need to manage that relationship. High quality, low price, you're going to run broke in three months. Okay? Because you're not going to break even. High quality, well, not high, but reasonable price. Yeah? That's where you need to, to get. Then finally, you ask the person, what's your name? Edson, so for this engagement, thank you for telling me that this is actually great quality and you love the pricing. Um, would you want to buy this product right now? So that's a, the, the last question I would want to ask is whether the person wants to buy the product. Okay? Because I've confirmed, one, he has the pain, he has the money, the agency is there, he has time, there is trust. So I ask him to buy. And in part of the validation process, even amongst yourselves, we want to see how many people actually said, you know what, we could work together, I could pay you for that service, eh? or actually I could buy that product, yeah? And some of your products are not that expensive. I don't think you have products you're selling that are unit 10 million shillings, right? I think some of them are very, you know, amazing products which people can afford, right? So you ask for that. Now when you go back, you reiterate and over and over and improve, and uh, everything coming together, hopefully you succeed. Uh, COVID hits, they lock us down. Hopefully you can innovate, you have the right mindset. Thank you so much, I'm Richard. 
Um, I think uh, Jimmy, Jimmy tells me you have a WhatsApp group, yeah? So he will share that link. All you do is click the link and there are questions that you answer as you're engaging. So as I'm engaging with you, I realize, oh, okay, his agency is high, agency is high and low. Then I proceed. Yeah? Eventually you'll have a spreadsheet which you can have to use even for future to see how you can um, hopefully make your business a success. Good luck. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. Are you fine? Are you well? Is everybody okay? Yeah, hey, you people look uh, very, very from here. I should take a photo. You, you look very serious. You're, you're scaring us. Mutu tease. You're teasing us. Oh, that reminds me. I, I used to think that the word kafulu means you have flu, you know. So, uh, the language of Luganda has been quite a an entrepreneurial journey. I've got the real huddles you guys got in the field. Um, without further ado, allow me invite to the stage um, to serenade us. Back in our day, we used to send letters, but uh, one of the things the digital age, which we appreciate about so much, has spoiled, is a human interaction. So we used to write letters and you know, you anticipate and wait for your letter to come back. And uh, we had a little heading that had deads. Yeah, dedications. Do, do you remember, do, does, anyone, does anyone remember that one? Ah, young people yeah. or, or the older generation, because you never know, it's extremes, two sides. Yeah, so um, yeah, it's, it's, it's through our partners um, and our funders, UNDP, that uh, this, pro this program is made possible. So we are, we are for lack of a better word, uh, and I use this very delicately, um, we are in a relationship with UNDP. So we'd like to send debts to them, and the next session uh, is to UNDP specifically. Um, Hadija, um, we'll mention that. <laughs> I got to find out very interesting things, um, skills, that I'll be sharing with you that many people here have, uh, which we don't know. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me invite Habat Sensamba to, to warm the stage and we'll proceed with our program after that. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. I am also here to sell my product, my own self. Uh, I am a musician. And seems like everyone is so tired and worn out, but please help me sing this song. I hope you know it. Enjoy. Don't worry about a thing. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's the song. in this group, isn't it? 
So the next song goes to all the beautiful ladies in the house. We know you work so hard, so much. Isn't it true? Forgive me the men, we always work. It's our thing, you know? So enjoy. getting out of tune I don't know just sorry you want to come and help me oh, thank you Let's go with that. Tell me something, girl. Are you happy in this modern world? Or do you need more? Is it something else you're searching for? I'm falling I need the good times I find myself Longing for change I need the bad times I feel myself Tell me something I try to feel that void. Oh, do you need more? Is it something else you're searching for? 
It's not my problem, you know?
Recording in progress. Mueza, who I love, Simusera, 
It's 10 minutes to 5 o'clock and uh, we can start converging because uh, exactly 5 o'clock we will begin our branding session. Thank you. But I've been searching for you for a while, oh, for a while. Yo, this kind of thing, no. We make me go crazy. We make me go. Don't lose my five senses. This kind of thing, no. We make me go crazy. Make me go, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You don't say me, I don't be playing, yo. And I cannot wait to see you later. Come and say with you so we go connect, baby.
Um, are we all seated or we are still in uh, business? just told us that you need a board. Maybe, may, maybe Richard is going to be a board member. He certainly is dressed for a board meeting. Okay, um, I'll just introduce myself shortly. My name is John Bironji Babirukamu. Uh, can you put up my presentation? Okay, so um, what I'm going to take you through is uh, digital communication strategy. Now, I can't take you through digital marketing fully. Uh, would need three days for that, okay? So I'm just going to give you a taste of the strategy you need to, uh, basically, uh, a few things that you need to do. But most importantly, I'm going to take you through the people who are actually online, okay? So that then you can make uh, some quick decisions on what you need to do. Because it's essential for you to know who is online. So that's me uh, on a good day. And uh, basically, um, I have three years uh, experience in agencies. Now, I say three years experience. I currently run an agency. But this was, uh, th this was me working for, an ag for two agencies, uh, Metropolitan Republic and QG Search and Search, some of the oldest agencies. But I also have. Uh, Four years experience with NBS. So I first went, got employed, then I started my own business. So four years with NBS, I helped them to start up their, their social media channels, the digital channels, the streaming and everything. Then after four years, I moved on and I went to uh, MTN, uh, where I had three years with MTN. And now I am, uh, I am currently employed uh, with my own company. I say employed with my own company because I also pay myself a salary, okay? We haven't yet reached where I'm getting dividends, so I'm still an employee. Okay, so um, enough about me. I want to uh, first talk about the landscape, so that you know, understand the landscape. So we're, we're seven, at least in January this year, we're about 7.8 billion people on this planet. Knowing how we produce, we're probably more by now, much more. But of those seven to eight, uh, 0 0.8 billion, 5.2 billion have mobile phones. Now, anyone who has a mobile phone is a potential market through digital marketing. Okay? Then of those, internet users are 4.66 billion worldwide. Okay? And uh, the people who are using active social media users are 4.2 billion worldwide. Okay? Globally. Now, if you want more on these statistics, there's a website called Data Reporto. You know, portal, like the way you go through a portal going somewhere. So datareporto.com. You'll find statistics for every country that is online. So suffice to say, you won't find North Korea, but every other country you will find. So even if you're thinking of marketing outside Uganda, uh, these guys have the data that will help you to to basically look at other markets. But most importantly, they have a very comprehensive report on Uganda, so you can also look through that. And they release new reports every January, which is why I say I'm referring to the January uh, report. Now, um, time spent on media, this is still globally. We actually spend about seven hours on the internet, which is nearly the same time that we sleep. Why? Let me ask you a question. How long does it take? Who here will not touch their phone for at least 15 minutes? Put up your hand. Ah, you guys are disciplined. Who won't touch their phone for 10 minutes? <laughs> Who won't touch their phone for five minutes? Who is constantly with their phone? And that is exactly so, especially the younger people who were born in the mobile age, if I may call it, when we have smartphones and whatnot. So, because of that, we find that we are interacting with our phone more, way more than we're interacting with any other form of communication or any other form of media. So because the phone is primarily the, the, the device for digital, uh, digital media or digital marketing, it's very important for us to think it through. So seven hours on the internet, we spend uh, three and a half hours watching TV. On average, this is globally. 
We spend about two and a half hours on social media. So what does that say? If we're spending seven hours on the internet and two and a half hours on social media, what does that tell you? Anyone can answer? It means that we are spending way more on other things other than social media. So when you're thinking of marketing online, social media is a good, a, a good way to start, but it is not everything. The other forms of media are everything. And that comes down to having a website. If you're trying to market online and don't have a website, you're, it's like having a car without an engine. Okay? You must, must, must have a website. We're going to look at a bit uh, more of that later. Uh, two hours is spent on, on reading uh, newspapers, so that's press media. Uh, one and a half hours is spent on streaming music, you know, your titles and all these other. Then one hour is spent on radio, whether online radio or broadcast radio, usually in the car, okay? Then one hour is spent uh, on podcasts, then, you know, another hour on gaming. So this is worldwide. This is a good statistic for you to have if you're looking to ex expand beyond Uganda, okay? But it's also important for us to look at the reasons why people are doing this. Okay, this is small. Um, when you look at it on this screen. But number one is finding information. People are not going to the internet to interact with, with friends first. It's finding information. Then staying in touch with friends and family. Then keeping up to date with news and events. So what does that tell you if you want to be found online? Have information. Okay? If you want to be found online, you must have information. One must have a website. Your website must, has, must have information. Your website must have information. That also means articulating what your product is. Many people have nice products. You go on their website, zero information about their website, about their product, sorry. So articulate your product on your website before you start posting on social media. So we've already asked this question. Uh, so No, we haven't actually. What's the first website you go to when you're looking for information or looking for news? Google. Very simple, very obvious. And you know why? Even globally, um, globally, Google actually, sorry. So globally, Google actually, if you see that, that chart, so the dark blue is, is Google search. The light blue is Google Images, and then the first green is, is YouTube. All that is Google. About 93% of all searches worldwide are through Google. So why are you focusing on Facebook? Okay? Think Google first. So it, just for you to think through, and thinking Google means what? Your website. So your website must be the first thing that you think of if you're, if, you're, uh, if you're building your business online, if you want to be found online. It's very important. Before you start social media, before you start running around with Twitter, you know, Twitter uh, and all the rest are all on that list, but you can see how none of them compares to Google. And where does Google pick its information? From your website. If we do have a master class, I'm hoping that we do have a master class with you guys, we will then have uh, a session where we teach you how to do Google My Business, which is now the next step uh, from just having a website. So Google My Business is also a very important bit for every business to have. So that sets you up on Google. Im uh, on, uh, it sets you up on, on uh, Google Maps, okay? It sets you up when someone searches in any category that you're in. You're the one who pops up. So that's also an important bit. But Google, Google, Google is actually the first thing that you, look, you need to look at when you're trying to sell uh, your business online. Now, looking at Uganda, we've looked extensively at the world. Looking at Uganda, uh, so we have about 28 million, um, 28 million people with phones. But if you're like me, I have two smartphones with four lines in them. So of those 28 million, I'm four people. Okay. So let's say about 60% of that. Let's just imagine. 
okay? So let's say about, um, about, okay, let's say about 15 million of those 28 are actual human beings, okay? That's nearly a third of our country. So we're still getting there. We're not yet, you know, really mobile, mobile, uh, uh, mobile phones are not really that accessible in our country, but they're getting there, especially as prices go down. But many of these phones are actually uh, non-internet-based phones. Why? Of the 28 million, you can see, according to UCC, uh, in their quarter one report, only 12.5 million of those phones are internet. Only 12.5 internet uh, devices are there in Uganda. Okay? So of, of those, uh, their report said about 7 million of them are smartphones. So you can imagine uh, that much. So if you have 7 million smartphones, Question, uh, which TV can reach 7 million people? I'll simplify it, none. Which radio can reach 7 million people? I'll simplify it, none. Which newspaper? I won't even go there. Newspapers sell 15,000 copies a day. Okay? So which media is, is, uh, is, is effective in reaching people at a fraction of the cost? You know, digital, if you do it right. Now, of those, um, now we get into the juice. Two million of them joined last year, obviously because of COVID, right? You know, everything was forced online. Schools went online. Uh, health went online. Everything went online. So we were forced to join. So uh, that was an anomaly. I would love to see the statistics of this year. But the years before that, we were growing by about uh, 800 or 700,000. So, you know, last year was really huge because of COVID. Um, then the next, so again, now we're getting down into the details. Of the, of the, um, the, the 12.5 million people, 80% of them are below the age of 35, which again makes sense, right? We're a very young country. Remember, 70, is it 70% or, or so of our country is below the age of 30? You know, our average age as a country is 17 and a half years. So this is understandable that you no know, majority of internet users are young. So if you're targeting older people, maybe you want to go back to radio. You get, okay? So um, then the last bit on this slide, sorry, I'm fighting this clicker. Greater Kampala holds 85% of internet users in Uganda. Those are three districts, Kampala, Mokono, Wakiso. But those three districts also account for 48.6% of our GDP. So the entire net worth of Uganda, 48.6% in those three districts. So guys who are in, uh, different, from different, different districts, I am sorry, but that's the truth. You know, I come from Rukunjiri, there are only about 5,000 users in Rukunjiri, <laughs> okay? So it's, you know, internet usage follows the money. So that's where we're having uh, an issue right now that is not well spread out, okay? So as, as devices become cheaper, as, uh, as uh, internet uh, continues to expand, these numbers will also change. But for right now, that devices and internet is still pretty expensive by Ugandan standards. You know, they will follow the money. So now let's uh, look at the social economic classifications. This is now who is actually there. So in marketing, we tend to have social economic classifications. We tend to classify people according to their ability to spend. So for example, a Sudil is not going to be targeted by the same product as a border rider. Sudil, you can't sell him a border border. Why? What will he do with it? Okay? But a border rider, you will want a Mercedes, but he can't afford it. So we tend to do that uh, in marketing. So we also look at the social economic uh, classification of users on the internet. And for starters, so you have your upper class who are your A. Your A class are your business owners, top executives of, of top country, companies. So those comprise only 7% of internet users in Uganda. Okay? Just for you to know. Then you have your B class, middle income, highly skilled management or supervisors. Those only comprise 15% of internet users in Uganda. I hope I fall there. I don't know. I hope I fall there. Then you have your C. These are now... Um,
You have your C1 and C2. These are now usually uh, guys at the bottom uh, in a company, either the middle level who are technocrats or the lower income who are entry level. So your customer care people, the people at the front desk, even your office driver, because he has a regular income, we, we, we refer him as C2, okay? So these C2 guys are, are, are also a huge percentage, about 30%. Then you have the rest, guys who are doing manual jobs, border borders, guys in, uh, with you know, odd jobs. These guys comprise nearly half of the internet users. Key fact, um, when you go to some of these telecoms, they'll tell you about 70 or 80% of their users spend only 1,000 shillings on internet per day. Okay, that just shows you that we have a huge number of low guys at the bottom of the pyramid, as we tend to call them, who are on the internet. So, if your product is for Muntua 1C, don't think the internet is too high for them. Muntua 1C wali ku internet. Okay? And Muntua 1C are actually the majority, because they are, they are 48% on the internet, especially channels like Facebook. Let's just look at some of the channels in particular. Okay. I didn't anticipate for this to be this blood, but anyway, I'll just take you through. Facebook has about 2.5 million Ugandans. Those 2.5 million are, are, have dropped from 3 million in January, entirely because of VPN, okay? You know, government policy, as we always put it when we're doing our SWOT analysis, government policy is always a threat. There's anyone from government? Forgive me. Anyway. Now, of those, 65% of them are male. Unfortunately, internet is a very male-based thing. I always say it's the next, uh, it's the next uh, frontier for women emancipation. So 65% of internet usage in Uganda is male. 35% is female. So even Facebook, 65% is male. Now, someone has a question? Well, the, I don't know. That is now, we need proper research. Whether it is time, or whether it is income, we need proper research. Then across the sector, Facebook is very democratic. From A to E, everyone is there. Okay? You'll find your, your, your Sudil, who posts a lot these days. He's retired. You know, his grandkids and what. Then you'll find, you know, a house girl or someone also posting. So it's very democratic. Facebook cuts across. Then you have, um, you have LinkedIn, which is for professionals. It has about 920,000. Now, that is because it is Luzungulunji for professionals. It's from A to C2, but it's also 64% uh, male. Then you have Instagram, which is 700,000, 60% male. It's the, the, the channel, the largest percentage of, of ladies, but it is also still male-driven, male or rather male-dominated. People always say, how is that? But I always tell people, that the people with the largest following may be ladies because... Uh, Instagram is a very me channel, eh? Hey, my selfie, my this, what? So it's a very me channel. So I always give people an example. If Sheila Gashumba posted a selfie, of course it's going to get way more likes than if I put my ugly face. Okay? So because it is a male, it still has a lot of males, but ladies get a lot of engagement because it's basically uh, a me, me, me channel. Then you have um, Facebook has a lot of trivia and a lot of news and politics. Very little on education, but also a little bit on, on, uh, on career and lifestyle. Now you look at Twitter, very much on news and politics. That's because Twitter is a very now channel. You know, anything, anything uh, two days old on Twitter is history. People are not talking about it anymore. So news and politics is hot on Twitter. But there's also a huge part on trivia, then career lifestyle. LinkedIn has no time for trivia. Guys are very serious. Hmm? So it's very much career, uh, but with a little bit of news and a whole lot of education. Then Instagram has a lot on uh, lifestyle, not career, but lifestyle, and a lot on trivia. Selfies, selfies, selfies. Okay, I saw people taking selfies. Yeah? We are by the lake. Instagram. Then YouTube has a huge bit on news and politics. And then also the trivia there is music. So music channels are the ones which, which contributed the trivia there for, for, for YouTube. So again, it's very important for you to know this. 
Because then you can then see, for example, if I'm putting news, which channel is biggest for news? So it's Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. I'm not going to put my news on LinkedIn. But if I'm looking, f I'm looking to develop people's careers, okay? Let's say I'm an HR firm. The best channel for me is LinkedIn. And maybe a little bit, uh, okay, LinkedIn, really. I don't see <laughs> anywhere where the rest is. Because the, the purple there on Instagram is more lifestyle. But if I'm a lifestyle brand, anything, you know, Gucci or whatever, or maybe you've created something that's lifestyle. Like, I'll give an example. Um, right now, every, uh, people who are selling cars, people selling shoes, that's now lifestyle, right? Instagram is the channel. Anything that is visual, that is lifestyle, Instagram is your channel. Facebook would have been uh, equally a bit on lifestyle maybe, but also Facebook right now, you know it's problems. People don't go there that much. But Instagram is your lifestyle. But also remember the category of people who go to Instagram. Okay? So, you know, a little bit uh, upmarket. So if you have a product that is upmarket, Instagram. I have a friend who is selling cars. They're not even his cars. So what he does, he goes to Bonds. He get, takes pictures of the best cars puts them on Instagram, and sells them and makes two million off each car he's making. And the guy will never work another day in his life. Someone else's capital, his social. I hope someone then, then now take that and <laughs> into the idea thorn. But anyway, if that's your idea, you can see which channel for you, Instagram. So um, any questions so far before we go next? That either means you're, you're very happy or you're completely lost. <laughs> okay, so far so good. Oh, yes. Yes, uh, I'm going to share a PDF version. Yes, but I'll share a PDF version that they can share on your WhatsApp group. Okay, then you can, you can be able to take that. Um, now, Hazman Analogy. I always tell, okay, so... Uh, disclaimer, I'm from Western Uganda. We have our cows. So I always tell people to, you, to do their social media like a herdsman. Uh, but what do I mean? For starters, think of your page or, or think of your, your company's social media profile as a farm. Okay? Now, first thing when you have your farm or your ranch, you want to first prepare it. Hmm? Before you bring the cows, you level it, put proper ground.
an email such that your salesperson can talk to me and then I close. Okay? Now some of your products can't be bought directly. You know, I can't I can't go to okay, Mercedes, maybe you can go to the website and buy. Okay? But let's say I can't buy a shirt. Okay, even a shirt you can buy. I'm trying to look for what you can buy. Whatever it is you, that you can't buy directly. Where well, you need a salesperson to come to you and then they, they you know, sort out those intricate issues and then they sell you the product. That is lead generation. But having a, 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 a page that talks about a product or a service without a form where a customer can give you their information is as useless as having a display in a shop without somebody to talk to the customer. You need, you need a lead generation form for someone who has liked what they've seen to immediately give you their contacts. Don't think they're going to come to your shop. Okay? Don't tell them, hey, if you've liked this, come to Cafe Romutas. People won't come. But if you nail them there and you're willing to go to them, that's how you get a sale. Then get professional help for search engine optimization. Remember when we talked about Google, where you all go for? You all, you all look for information first. So you need your website to stand out above your competitors. Okay? So when you search, for example, when you search digital marketers in Uganda, you know, my company, Hedge Marketing, should be on top. Okay, we've been there for six months only, so we're probably not there yet. But the reason why you want your company to be at the top is because most likely someone will click on that. For you to get there, you need search engine optimization. Okay? If you Google, I'm hoping, if you Google uh, digital marketing gurus, I'm going to be first. I don't know. I'm just hoping. So you need search engine optimization. Now, for your social media, some key topics, that key, key pointers you need. One, have a logo as your profile picture. Some big companies, including media houses, put funny things on their profile pictures. Must be your logo. Such that if I see your post on my timeline, I can immediately tell where it is from. And your logo must be centered, not cut in half. So if you have a logo that is long and not a, a, a square or a round logo, you know, give it some breathing space that it is centered. Then fill your about us and contact us information. Now, most social media channels have that, okay? So Facebook has an about us and contact us information. Uh, there's a profile where you fill in Twitter, LinkedIn pages and all that. Ensure you fill that in. Oh, and people, please, eh? stop creating profiles on Facebook and LinkedIn for your businesses. You must create a page. There's a difference between a page and a profile. When you log into Facebook, that is your profile. Your profile then manages a page. If you don't know the difference, Google it. Use video as much as possible. Now, I know video is very expensive, but use video as much as possible. Why? Because video engages people more than pictures. So if you can't do a, a, a professional video, pull out your phone and kuvuya. But use video as much as possible, but also try to be professional. You know, keep it. Remember when they were talking about brand? Remember that bit also. Don't go against your brand rules. Okay? Um, use relevant hashtags. You know what hashtags are? Hash social media tips. Always, always, always use a hashtag. Because when you use a hashtag, someone from absolutely nowhere who doesn't follow you will see your post because of a hashtag. I always post using hashtag social media tips. That's when I'm talking about social media tips, okay? So I always post with hashtags. And when I look at my analytics, I end up seeing myself being followed by people from India, from Chile, all sorts of funny countries I'll never go to. Okay, not funny. All sorts of countries I'll never go to and probably might never communicate to, but because I am tweeting, people are following. So if you have a product, imagine someone from Chile sends you an order. Like, yeah, your, 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 what? your version of the hoe is going to work here, so we need 1,000 hoes. 
whatever your product is. Especially if you have an online product that is scalable, you definitely want as many people from different regions to see your product. Okay? So use hashtags in everything. And also use relevant hashtags. Notice I put relevant. It's a good thing if there's even a red dot under. Relevant. Don't put a hashtag because you see it trending. Hmm? You see Bobby Wine trending? You're talking about a shoe? Hashtag Bobby Wine. Neda, relevant hashtag. Stick to channels that work. We've just seen the channels, you know, the different channels and what they are doing. Stick to channels that work. If you're a professional, stick to things like LinkedIn. You know, if you're selling a good for Muntuawansi, stick to things like, like Facebook. You know, leave LinkedIn. So stick to channels that work. Not every, you don't need to be on every social media channel. You just need to be on the ones that work. Now, this is just an estimate for you to look at the cost of reaching 1,000 people. You can see social media is, at the bo is, is down there, very cheap, as opposed to newspapers. But if you're targeting people across Uganda, and you're targeting people deep in the village, then maybe this is not the channel for you. But remember that a large number of Ugandans are still using phones that are not internet enabled. So maybe SMS is a better option. OK? SMS and USSD, USSD is at star 165 hash. Those are still parts of digital that you can also use. And they still give some of the benefits. But if all that doesn't work, think of radio. But before you start spending on newspapers, TV, what, Vichy, hey, digital is much cheaper to reach uh, uh, 1,000 people. Now, uh, I'm just going to ignore this. You look through. The five W's and H position yourself for leadership. You know, what you're good at is important. Uh, what, what you love is important. Uh, you look through them and then see the, the colored bits are important. But I'll go through this. Quadrants of influence. Now, you've all heard of influencers, influencers, OK? Ideally, they should be called brand ambassadors. But you need to be an influencer in your market. Uh, you remember Ariho's presentation? He showed you some influencers, Donald Trump. By far the biggest influencer ever, even though you know, one person didn't agree with his, his message. Okay? But you can see Museveni, massive influencer. The guy sits on a chair to take a phone call by the roadside, and we're all tweeting about it. Okay? Andrew Mwenda and all these guys, they have built influence. So people follow them. So you need to do that if your business is to run you need to also build that influence and run your business or, or create business for yourself through your influence. Okay? So four quadrants. One is authority. Who are you? One. Okay? Authority. Now, if you don't have the authority, you can fake it. I'll give an example. Look at musicians. Musicians, they feel the guy comes in and you think he's the biggest star. Kumbe, you don't even know his name. Okay? So you might want to do that, obviously, not, not, like, not exactly like musicians, but you know, might be something that you want to think of. Personal areas love is Latin Ibrahimovic. He's not the best footballer in the world, but you would think the guy is a god. When he joined uh, the LA Galaxy, football team in LA Galaxy put out a newspaper ad saying, you're welcome. I've come. You're welcome. Okay? Authority. Then visibility. You must be visible. That means having proper channels, but it also means uh, your brand must be online. But not all channels, eh? But your brand must be online. So it must be visible. But even you as a person, you must be visible. Then consistency. When you consistently talk about something, people then start to respect you for it, and they start to come looking for you when they're looking for something. Probably the reason why I'm here, because I consistently talk about digital marketing. OK? Yeah, I'm seeing a woman saying yes. OK? So it's probably why I'm here, because you know I consistently post about digital marketing, about trends and what online. So hey, on that note, follow me at Bavirukam across all socials. Karango. Okay. Then engagement, most importantly. When people ask you questions in the comments inbox, you must engage them. 
Okay? Because when you engage them, you create that bond. I'll give you an example. There are two companies. One is MTN, one is KCCA. MTN answers every single question, however stupid it may be. KCCA, you ask a stupid question, they'll block you. Okay? So engagement, engagement, engage with people, and they'll start to come to you for things related to you, what, your sector. And as they continue to do that and feel comfortable doing that, guess what? You get business. I'm one person who answers a lot of questions about digital marketing that I keep thinking, hmm, this one I should charge him. Nay, okay. And I engage with the person. But guess what? Some of those times the guy goes, tries it like, hey, the other thing we talked about, hey, how much? Ah, yeah. What, what, what Richard was talking about, where you've created value, eh? <laughs> so, engagement, engagement. Any questions? Yes. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. No other mic. SOP. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Question number one. Let's look at the analogy of the bull, of the herdsman. Mm. We are looking at the bulls, the influencers, and you're saying they are a game in digital marketing. I want to understand what do you think about the point of compromise between your brand and the bull? Because you have values that you stand for and you have a brand that is out there. But then you need that bull and totally what the bull is doing, the influencer, is not anywhere in sync with your values and with your brand you're known for. For example, I will give you a recent experience. Bad Black comes out to say she's marketing for Victoria University. <laughs> and we don't know uh, Victoria University being anywhere associated with what Bad Black does. And this goes viral. How sure but are you? At least with their brand that we know, because that's their brand. That's what I'm speaking for them even when they are not here. So I want to understand, uh, in that due process, Victoria University became so viral, but then the picture. Yeah, so I want to understand that. Is it okay to go ahead and compromise your values because you're targeting the bull? Thank you very much. There are two signs of that coin. Uh, one is that all publicity is good publicity. Okay, that's just one, one side of it. I guess we're still talking about Victoria University, others would have forgotten about them because they put up. But at the same time, which parent would want to take their, their daughter or their son to any university that is associated with Bug Black? Anyone here? Yes. So the thing is, the thing is you have to be also uh, sensitive especially the people that you're trying to market uh, to, okay? Because I'll give an example. If you're trying to market to, I'll give an example. Uh, I used to work for a telecom. And yes, every now and then you're doing, you know, uh, Momo Nyabo and all these. These are Kayola products. You can get your Kayola influencers, okay? Even if 75% of the time is talking about sex, he still has a following that is Kayola. They will also buy Momo Nyabo. You get but when I'm talking about a niche product, a business product, when I'm talking about Mercedes-Benz, for example, why would I bring that guy? The guy is on a border. You get? So sometimes you want to think of the following you're, you're trying to get, or, or think, to the people, think about the people you're trying to communicate to, and then look at the people that they follow, people that actually influence their opinion. I always tell people that the biggest influence on this, in this country is by far His Excellency, President Museven. He's the kind of guy, as much as Bobby Wine, Bobby Wine, Seven is still the biggest influencer. But of course, he's not going to jump on your product. Okay? But you can see what he did yesterday thanking the companies. People at UBL almost uh, threw a party. Okay? He mentioned them. So having the right person to, to talk about your product is as key as having your product being talked about, okay? So don't, don't always do a bad black. Sometimes you must think niche. So again, there are two sides to that coin. Sometimes you want a bad black, 
but most especially for things like Facebook and YouTube. Don't capture me in five seconds, I'm gone. So one more question from the lady over here at the front. My name is Ruth Namtv Elizabeth. Uh, you said something about optimizing social media and that um, one of the ways optimizing your social media and that one of the ways you can actually do that is by using relevant hashtags for every post. I am trying to sell a service using LinkedIn because I'm trying to target um, the A-class market. But um, hashtags don't really do the thing on LinkedIn. In most cases, what happens is you get views, you don't get followers, you don't get um, engagement. But people come around, they check out the page, you know, they just see your images and whatever you're doing, the videos, and walk away. How would you advise I do that? Well, it's not the problem is not the hashtags because people are coming to view. The problem, I think, is the content. Okay, because if people come and view, if they see your post and they don't like, okay, then there's a problem. So, for starters, th there are three engagements, uh, three engagements that we look at as character. One is someone liking. So now we have many emotions. Okay, we have like, we have love, we have sad, we have hate, and all the others. So someone giving you an emotion means you've actually touched them emotionally. Okay. That's why we call them emotions. Then someone commenting means you've gone beyond emotion. Now the person is moved to actually put themselves out there and ask a question or give you a compliment. By the time someone shares, they not only love it, but they feel that other people should see this. So if people are not doing any of those three, but they are viewing your content, then you need to rethink your content. Maybe your, your, your content is is uh, targeting the wrong people. If you're doing any form of advertising, maybe that's the problem. Or maybe, like you've said, you're using the wrong hashtag, so people are, are, are viewing it, uh, looking for, let's say, uh, sports shoes, and you're selling kakondo. OK? But you've just put sports shoes, hashtag sports shoes. So maybe you want to be more specific towards your product in your hashtags. OK? Because I'll, I'll give an example. When I do my social media tips, I could put hashtag social media. But I actually put social media tips because there are people looking for social media tips. Okay? So there's a difference. When I talk about social media, it's, it's a whole lot of other things that is not related uh, to tips. So maybe you want to make that, uh, that difference in your hashtags. Maybe be more specific, but most importantly, check your content to see is it appealing enough. Because, you know, there's having bait. Your content is like bait. If your fish are not catching, maybe you want to change the, the, the either change where you're fishing or change the bait. Okay? So I'll unfortunately have to cut short because of time and hand over to Mr. Manana. Thank you. Wow, another, another round of applause. It's good to see people wake up. Um, it, this is a very fantastic session. Uh, I don't know what you think about it. What do we think about this? Really great session. I've been a victim of uh, creating irrelevant hashtags uh, where you use a cow and yet you're selling uh, chicken, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but because of grace, I'm still here. Um, we, will ha we have a short activity. I would like to invite all the all the facilitators to come to the front quickly. And while they come to the front, uh, pardon me if I don't pr pronounce your name correctly, uh, the following, when we're done with this activity, um, uh, please get to the registration desk. I'll just read this very quickly. Emmanuel Junibi, Hashim Muriri, Nake Nakeje Susan, Akankwasa Frank, Buenje Duncan, Onyari Munsi Moses, um, Bambali Bran, Etumu Daniel, Ekua Ruth, Elimu Emmanuel, Ledra Bariaisho, Sanyu Abdul Jamil, Mutebi Alawi, Kagame Steven, Twinomugisha Edson, Ezire Dios, Kasaija Shafik, Emmanuel Kagwa, Kato James, Sechitoleko, Nasozi Mariam, Kemigisha Kukunda Kwe, Rukundo Mathias, 
Tu Muevas de David Emmons, uh, Brenda Bra Benda Brand, Tu Simwe, Ranga Deogracious, Muhangazi Eli, Tu Musime Robert, Namatebe Ruth, Elizabeth, Kukunda Kwe Yvonne, Nantamba Tatland, Nkungwa Mark Hillian, Atua Pius, Ekwang Moses, and Mwanya Jessica. So when we're done with this activity, um, please uh, go to the registration desk and ask for Brenda. She has something special for you. Um, thank you. For now, uh, I would like to invite all the facilitators to join us for our activity before we go for food, before we go for dinner. In Africa, an event is not an, an event if there's no food. Usually when people come back from parties or events, you ask them how the event went. They tell you why. It was, it was very nice. What happened? We ate. We ate. So, um, so food will be coming after this. I would like to hand over to hand to hand the mic to James now to take us through our activity. Do we have all the facilitators here? Okay. Also for the participants, if if you need extra information, if you'd like more insight on the topics that are being taught today, please feel free to approach any of the facilitators here. They don't bite. They're lovely people. Uh, just don't hug them because of COVID. But when COVID goes, you'll be free to, to share a hug with them. Thank you, Richard. Take us. All right. Amazing. Um, so we're going for food, which is exciting. I know your enzymes are excited. Andrew, hi. I think you need to be here. Yes. Oh, he's not what? He's not dancing. Oh. No, there's no dancing. Okay, so there's an activity we're going to do. Um, and I think it's it's something that each and every one of us here uh, would love to experience. Um, but also, I think every entrepreneur, every business owner, or if you have an idea, and I know we're going to pitch. I saw a space for pitching, yeah? Um, we want you to practice your pitching. And by practicing, not you know informally, yeah? So we would love to see people interact, yeah? would love to see people network, because I remember when they said you can break off, I saw people walking away, yeah, and leaving, you're leaving a lot of opportunities here, yeah? So the, 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 the cash that people are gonna go with is great, but cash goes away, yeah? Depending on how you use it. Um, this knowledge, if you go into the statistics, he will tell you what you see today, tomorrow something else comes and takes it away. Yeah, so you, you might not keep all the information you're hearing here. But the connections you make and a number you share or a number you receive or an idea you share, you're bound to work with it longer. And then the facilitators here, we have made mistakes. We've lost money. I literally have lost a lot of money making mistakes, yeah? Um, but I've learned a lot. So I have a master's. I met Aaron. Aaron, where are you? This gentleman here told me he has a master's. I told him, well, you, I don't have a master's. I just have a degree, but I've read widely because I didn't want to make any more mistakes. And today I don't make the mistakes that, you know, cause me that hurt. So these, the team here, all have made mistakes, I will tell you. They have all made mistakes when you see them speak. Um, some of them have seen the mistakes, so we, we would like to cross-pollinate if you know what I mean, eh? like have ideas bounce off each other and have learning begin to take place. Don't go back the same. You might not win the pitching, but don't lose the connection or the contact. I want to ask uh, randomly, I point at you. What's your name, beautiful lady? Oh, it's a guy. Jesus Christ. Please come over here. <laughs> no, no, interesting. He's covered in a mask and... Yes, here. Yeah. What's your name, lovely guy? Emmanuel, do you have your phone here with you? It's a smartphone? Not really. All right. Um, are you on the social WhatsApp group? Which phone are you using? Oh, you left it at home. Oh, wow. All right. Um, let me select a lady. Lady over there. Um, am I right? Yeah. Come, 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 come. No, excuse me, yeah? You look amazing. 
All right. You have your phone with you? Yeah, because I want to get your contact. Huh? Um, and then I would need a guy. Who do I get? Uh, you come. Come. I see you're hungry. Come. Uh, De Derek? Dixon. Sorry. Dixon. Okay, so Dixon here has a phone. And your name is Sandra. So Sandra also has a phone. I want you to open your social WhatsApp uh, group, the one for the boot camp. On that group, there is a link that was shared, customer validation. You see it? And then I'm going to need a microphone. A second microphone. And I'm going to hand them the two microphones. Yeah? I want them to role play as you talk about your businesses. And then the facilitators eh, will observe. All right? And then feel free to give a little bit of feedback here and there or guide in terms of how they're engaging, in terms of how they're asking questions. Because after this is done, what we are going to do when we are living together here for the next two other days, we will be meeting each other and maybe that's the kind of conversation we'll be having. Okay, so feel free to approach a facilitator. I think the facilitators have been approaching you, yeah? And we will continue approach. Don't run away. <laughs> when, when we are coming, we, we don't bite. Okay, so... This is yours. You've awesome. And have you opened it? Okay, so this link is going to help you collect data. The data you put in there will be sent to you. You'll have a whole Excel sheet full of data. When you go back, if you go back with nothing, you'll go back with everything. And next week you can pick up the phone and call Sandra. Sandra it is? Sandra and say, hi, Sandra, by the way, the conversation we had, I kind of have another idea. You think we can meet up and sit and talk? Or I think I want to tap into your network, all right? Something like that. So, so this link is opened. Um, I'll just take you through it quickly. Of course, the first bit is your, your details, uh, your business name, you who's conducting. For example, for me, uh, the consultation firm I work with is Sync Sales or Sync Sales. Then the customer name, Sandra. All right. Then uh, when they say, does the contact meet the customer segmentation criteria? Of course, don't ask them, do you meet my criteria? Uh, you know, eh? you have to assess. Eh? Well, you know, Pima, Pima. Yeah? Then you say yes, then you approach, and then uh, you will start telling them about your product. But you're trying to find out, are they aware of the need I'm trying to solve? Okay, and you're just talking to them. Don't ask them, are you aware of the problem I solve? Okay, so we want to see that engagement. I want to see how you pitch <laughs> to another customer and how they pitch to you. But have a conversation. Okay, don't ask, just have a conversation. For example, Sandra, come over, and I'm going to do an example as Sync Sales. Okay, we do consulting, coaching, training, and business support. Hi, Sandra, how are you doing? Um, uh, what do you do for a living? Medical lab technologist, so I work in the healthcare industry. Okay, as a professional or as a s or you provide a service for that? As a professional. Um, um, and how is that going? So far, everything is okay. What are your key projects in the in the in that space? Uh, currently, I'm so engaged in research. Okay. And, uh, I'm so passionate about uh, innovation in biology, so. Kind of work. I'm so doing your work. research is about innovation and biology. Exactly. Tell me s more about that. What exactly are you uh, researching about? Uh, currently, um, we are working on a project where we are engineering um, microorganisms that can be able to degrade plastic. So we want to express like enzymes, which we can have like systems where we can be able to grade plastics into uh, smaller components that can be used like in other industries. And how big is that uh, in terms of what you're trying to achieve? Are you achieving the outcomes you're looking for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So currently we are at a point of uh, proof of concept. Yeah. But we believe if this is to go through, it would be, it would be a great one. Because uh, we are trying to address a challenge, which is uh, 
a global problem. And we believe if we can achieve that, then we, we should be able to you know, solve this problem. And it would be a big project. And how are you solving this? Are you packaging it in terms of a drug or in terms of um, software or technology? So for now, we would uh, package the enzyme maybe in kind of uh, smaller quantities like a drug. Yeah, it, it doesn't have so much to do with like, uh, the digital technology. Do you intend to commercialize this drug or give it out for free? Uh, the intention is to commercialize it. Oh, wow. Okay, so um, I think I'm, I'm interested to follow that conversation. And when you are at the point of commercialization, I think it would be great for me to touch base with you. You think we can have coffee and do ABCD? Anyway, so she's in her engagement, she's really selling. Yeah, and I could tell she's selling. Is that the business you're running right now? Okay. Yeah, so in her engagement, she's selling. But have a conversation to find out what is going on. Okay? In my heart, I want to make sure she buys my consulting services. But I can tell she's telling me more about herself. So I'm, I don't want to tell her about me when she's telling me about herself. I want to listen and buy, buy, buy every idea and at least put the relationship ahead. Then tomorrow, maybe I can say, hey, you know, you have time, can I, can I follow up? But anyways, so in this case, I want you to engage with her. And what business are you doing? You're, you're writing? Wheels, eh? amazing. And by the way, talk to me, because I want to write my will. I promise I want to write my will. Eh? So talk to me about that. Eh? I, I'm going to listen and see what value you add. And what business are you doing? supply chain and supply chain is a challenge currently right now with covid let's let's listen to this yes hello nice to meet you um i'm aaron Kas i'm Kasos dixon and you um sandra martini um okay so we are today in this setting and uh, we're trying to to understand how business works so what are you into what project are you working on uh currently i am um, uh working on establishing um, an application for supply chain uh, business in the healthcare industry. Wow. That's a good sector. And uh, have you registered any progress, uh, finding out how, how, have you registered any progress? Uh, at what stage are you with that project? So currently, we've fully developed the application okay. up running on Okay. Yeah, uh, we done some internal testing. Mm. We want to now go ahead and do the launch. Okay. Have you tried to test the market to find out whether people actually, uh, it's a serious uh, problem that you are trying to reach out to solve? Yes, we've done some uh, small trials. Mm. So okay. That's nice. Two ways, eh? Eventually, uh, to try and the real purpose and why, the idea is to ask why are people so much excited about that. Yeah, true. And then you take her into it, and then you see how connected she feels, and then you find a way of bringing in a win without paying any damage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's a brilliant idea. And uh, personally, uh, you know, health is all over, and it's one of the key uh, sectors that everyone wants to be in a good health. I think. Uh, uh, I have some uh, people in the health sector. Probably can connect you and see how far you can all work together towards uh, ensuring oh, a healthy environment. That sounds exciting because uh, we are definitely looking out for different stakeholders that we can and work are you with. Acting it out or you actually have? I do have. Because <laughs> I will. <laughs> for you. you jump in and you get some of those. Because if you can't buy, maybe you can try. Yes. Yeah. This is real. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, so that, that, that is really an exciting opportunity. I think I would definitely uh, want to get more about that. Mm. 
they are currently looking for different stakeholders whom we can work with. They are looking out for suppliers who can be able to get the platform. But of course, the consumers, yeah, so. Okay, that's exciting. Actually, personally, I'm into we rating and drafting. Okay. So it's a new business venture. We identify the gap between uh, we drafting and storage. So we, 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 we intend to bring out uh, a solution whereby individuals uh, can feel comfortable draft their wills and know that they are safely stored. The challenge is most people actually think that to draft one, you need to have wealth somewhere. I mean, if you have kids, you would want, you may be interested in knowing, I mean, dictating who should be the guardian in case of death. And if you have like a message you want to put out to your kids, you might be wish interested in giving that message through a will because people have a theory about that you have to, you know, people think that by the time you write a will, you should be at your deathbed or you're about to die or you are elderly. But between the age, as long as you have assets, you have uh, you have good information you want to put out there, I mean, you should have a will because this shows how you want whatever you have to be distributed. So it's not okay. about death. It's about you ensuring that uh, what you've worked on will be clearly managed or will, uh, will be distributed according to your wishes. So, yeah. Mm, so, yeah. So that's it mainly about will and the services we do offer is will drafting. If you do, have never drafted any will, you need a will that can be actually legally enforced because the challenge is you may draft one on your own and get challenged eventually before courts of law. So, mm. so I get it uh, personally. Uh, it's it's something that I hadn't thought about, but I have had uh, a few engagements with some people whom I think would interested in this and i think it would be nice if i would maybe connect you to such uh, a that would be a very good opportunity to network because this is it's more like a daily thing you know if, if each, each, of, each of us at some point we, are we will die that's eventually that will happen but the key thing how have you left the people that you care about dearly? are they going to be fighting against you after uh, against your property or what you've left behind, how are your kids going to be taken care of? That's important. And normally this, this reality is hit us away now, almost dying. So yeah, sure. if you plan this out early enough, it's good for you, it's good for your friends. So probably you're going to spend them to spread the message, the good news to everyone you encounter about what we can offer and how we can benefit their family in the long run. Mm, thank you. Uh, thank all right, just a quick one, yeah? And by the way, these things are not perfect, yeah? Um, but the more you do that, the better you get. So a quick one, what do you know about Derek? Dixon, I'm gonna get that name. So what do you know about Dixon, just from the engagement? You all know he writes wills, yeah? Yeah. Wills, what do you know about Sandra? Sorry? Sorry? Enzymes. <laughs> good. It's good. No, at least it's good. You'll remember and say, hey, Sandra, enzymes, enzymes, yeah? And then you pick it up from there. How are the enzymes going? But that's how connecting starts, yeah? That's how connecting starts. If you don't go out and talk, don't worry about what you're saying, yeah? But gradually. Now, when they next meet, it might be more polished, okay? Um, I think for me, what I want to encourage is just walk out and talk. Because the more you do it, the more you polish. And uh, I, I will invite, thank you so much. Um, I don't know whether there is, let me just give a little bit of one, one minute eh, for feedback from Rogers, feedback from uh, Marie, and feedback from Kojo. At least I know the Kojo name, Kojo, yes. Just feedback around this conversation, and then we will have Manama come, uh, Manana come by.
Thank you, thank you very much. Um, talking about enzymes, I think this is about the time that enzymes start to work. So we, we have you covered. We have you covered, don't worry. I also wonder if you, well, what comes to, to, uh, to me, what came to me about her was enzymes and the same thing, the wills. So I wonder what happens if you work at National Water and Sewerage Corporation. Things become tough. Um, all the people whose names were read, this is a reminder. Please go to the registration desk and see Brenda uh, before you have your supper. That is one. Two, um, all the participants, kindly pick your tags. Um, it's, it's, you just go straight and the fast left. There's a quadrangle there with speakers set up. You can go and find your tags there. They will be your access to dinner tonight. So. We don't want you to fast if it wasn't in your plan. Um, okay, there's free Wi-Fi, uh, courtesy of uh, courtesy of Dennis. Okay, uh, we'll share the code for to the Wi-Fi. Thank you for being patient with us. We've had a tight program. Thank you for keeping a lot and learning. Uh, this has been very impactful. I've learned a lot personally and uh, I look forward to doing business better and I'm sure it's the same with you. Um, so I'll invite, uh, Uganda is a very religious country. I'll invite one person to come here and pray for us very quickly um, and it doesn't matter whether you're, you're whatever faith it is, you're, you're welcome to pray for us. Yeah, And then I'll let you know how we'll go how we'll move. And uh, we hope the, se the prayer session is not an intercession session. Uh, let's leave the demons for today and, uh, and just keep it brief. Amen. Okay, so this is the order. We'll start with the very last uh, section, the segment section, this side. Hey, people here look like supermodels. Wow. Anyway, we start with the, the supermodels here. Uh, you will be the first to leave, uh, just so we don't, because of, the, the, of COVID and, you know, the restrictions, we don't want to to to, um, to start. In that, that we don't want to surge in that area. So from this desk, you can move and, and uh, access your dinner. Uh, also to mention while we move for, the U, for our friends uh, from UNDP, uh, your supper will be, your dinner will be at, um, at, at the restaurant and that's Victoria restaurant. And, uh, and yes, and it's now, dinner is open now. So uh, feel free to go and have a, an indulge. Okay, and when this section is done, then we'll have this section. The Bible says the last shall be fast and the fast last. Uh, so tomorrow, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll walk in line with the holy book. Okay, um, and then this section can follow. Yes, we can follow now, just so we don't surge up. Uh, also, coron the, the corona test is free. So if you're worried about paying 250000 for it, don't worry. It's free. It's on us. Yes, NACE and UNDP are making it possible. So if you'd like to test, even if you tested already and you want to test again just to confirm, yeah, you never know the, the virus was asleep when they, when they checked you. Just go to the registration desk and ask to be tested. It's for free. You don't have to pay. Uh, thank you and enjoy your dinner. DJ, take us away. Also, if you want to dance, feel free. If you're fasting and you want to dance, use your, your bones. Feel very free to come. Thank you. I can put you on a remix, remix, remix. Perky yo, take a perky yo and tell me you've been hurt before. Stamp check, got you living life, but you ain't working though. Her man said that way long, I'm the first to know. She ain't control, she want a perk and get a perk and Go crazy through the trial and show me why now. Can't allow 100 niggas waving her own clubhouse. Off the 42 with my dog, I feel like Doug now. I just sip so much pints of red, I think I'm blood now. I'm from the trench, yeah, for sure, for sure. You got my back, let me know. Yeah. crib in the middle of the night. I don't know that you miss me as I put it down. Right now, baby, I can put you on the light. Don't let a nigga like me can change your life, oh, baby. Everything you do is amazing. Ain't nobody got you go crazy. I got 